Okay, folks, I'm going to show us how to take some things out of Rhino 3D and bring them into both Unity and into Unreal. So this is just going to be a super simple introduction. And then if there are additional questions, I will dig deeper into other videos. That way, this will be short and anyone who's interested in looking at either software will be able to make it happen. Okay, so in order to make this a little more interesting, I've pulled up a model from a parklet that oops from a parklet that we built here in san francisco a number of years ago uh, and so this was a pretty detailed model it involved cutting a whole bunch of steel ribs to support a bar top and when you arrived at a certain point in car or a certain point in bicycle on bicycle or as a pedestrian the view would align and you would see the logo of the club that we built park so parklet outside of. Okay, so I am going to take this entire model, which contains surfaces and meshes and objects and curves and everything, and I'm just going to export this entire thing. I'm not even gonna bother, and that's gonna let me talk about some of the problems and some of the things that don't work. So as you can see up here, I've got 400 curves, 131 surfaces, seven poly surfaces, some extrusions, a dimension, and some text. I go up to File, and I say Export Selected. And you can see I've already got one here. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll down. Normally, it will default to saving it as a 3DM, a Rhino model file. And you want to scroll down to the M section for Motion Builder, and what we want is an FBX file. An FBX file is a type of file that most game engines will readily accept. And so we're gonna select that FBX. We're gonna give it a name. I've already exported this. I'll just call it Parklet2. We can go ahead and save textures would not be a bad idea um, and do a bunch of other things here if we want. But most of it doesn't really matter. There aren't a lot of options in the FBX out of Rhino. Uh, but when I go ahead and hit save, those options are going to pop up again. And so you can try and export NURBS objects. They, from my experience, they don't really come through. Uh, what happens is during this export, it's going to convert all of our surfaces into solids or best as it can to solids as meshes. We'll see in a second that there's some problems. Uh, we also want to make sure that we, if we have the option, uh, it came out in later versions of Rhino, map the Rhino Z to the FBX Y. Both Unity and Unreal, from my recollection, actually, I think it's maybe it's just Unity. Um, a lot of animation software has the Y be up. And most architects working with Rhino are used to having the Z be up. So this often makes sense. Uh, and we go ahead and say OK. And this is where it gives us our poly mesh options. And if I zoom in on here and I change the slider to a setting and say preview, it's going to show me how it's going to break these surfaces up into triangles so that it can be created as a non nerb surface, as a, as a surface solid that's made out of mesh. So you can see I'm getting a lot of triangulation here. And so I'm probably going to go for fewer polygons. If I turn this up, I might get a better degree of curvature, but I'm going to get, get so many more polygons. For my purposes, for visualization, doing fewer polygons right now is probably OK. OK, so it's now exported. And to save the excitement, I'm just going to go ahead and pull over my Unity file. And what I've done, here it is, I've opened up my AR application that we've built previously. If you haven't done that and you wanna figure out how to build an augmented reality application and use your webcam on your computer, go ahead and find my other video on that. But what I've done is I've gone ahead and imported this I believe I went to Assets, Import New Asset, and I navigated to the correct folder. I found the FBX file, and I said Import, 
and that went ahead and brought it in. I repositioned it. And here, if I actually scroll out, I repositioned it so that it's over my image target. And let's look at a few things in here. Well, first off, you can see the outline of this person, or you could see the outline of that person until I just select, deselected it. So a lot of surfaces in Rhino are single-sided surfaces. Rhino automatically shows you both sides of that surface, but most rendering or animation software really likes to treat surfaces as single-sided. It's more efficient. So it does a process called back face culling, where it hides the side of the surface that you wouldn't normally see. So in that case, some of these people are the right way around, but some of these people, like this gentleman right here, is the wrong way around. I'm also getting the same problem with all of these elements on the front, all these steel supports. When these were made in our Rhino file, they were actually meant for laser cutting. So we didn't worry about turning them into meshes. So now when you bring them into one of these game engines, you're only gonna see them from one side. So that's a couple problems that are happening there. But other than that, I've got it in here. I can hit play. And it's going to turn on my webcam. And there's my webcam. I'm going to turn over this sheet of paper, which holds the marker that we used. And there we go. So this is pretty neat because I can move the piece of paper around. And that is a way of navigating around the model. I can also pick up the camera and move around. And it's pretty responsive. So even though I have a lot of polygons in here, it's really quite responsive, even in an AR application. So in an instance where, as an architect or as a student, you've built something in Rhino and you wanted to show it to someone else through an AR application, you could create a marker and you could publish this to a phone or even like have it work with your webcam. Uh, and then that way you could have more details in a digital model that might be superimposed over a physical model. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. I'm gonna move that off screen. And the other thing that I've done is I've done the same thing in Unreal to a degree. I haven't built this out as a AR application in Unreal because I haven't given you a video about that yet, but this is a first person template and I've imported this and I've actually scaled it a little bit so that when I press play, sorry, it's not a first person template. This is the third person template. So here's the default character walking around Unreal and now they're walking around in our parklet. Now the thing that happens with Unreal's camera in the third person is when there's something blocking it, like these cutouts of people, it tends to jump me forward. That's why I'm getting a little bit of a jumpiness when I'm over here. But here, I'm able to, wow, I'm getting a lot of that jumpiness. Let's walk around the outside. That's a little too glitchy. Here, I'm able to walk around and experience this parklet. I'm also able to see that we're having that same problem with single-sided surfaces not coming through. But I have a very different experience here, right? I'm being, I'm much more immersed in walking around the parklet versus that AR application, which is much more of a, I'm looking at a model situation. Uh, with Unreal, what I was really doing is I went and said import into level. I found that FBX and I said open. I told it to drop it into the content folder and it's gonna tell me that it already exists, but I basically did all of the defaults uh, and brought it in. Once it came in, there was a little bit of an issue in that all of the elements come through as individual objects we can do a little bit there where we can actually put them into a folder uh, as we dive a little bit deeper into this. But it also brought in this camera. So it took the camera from Unreal and brought that in 
and I ended up having a sort of ghost experience in here where I had a model that I couldn't move, but I could move the camera. Um, so I've deleted that camera from my Unreal model and I've imported all of those individual objects. And if I open up the Parklet, you can see they're all just numbered as objects. And I can go through and select them individually and move them around. The other thing to note is to get this scale to be correct for the third person, I've scaled up the model that I've imported to about 2.6. I'm not being super precise in terms of scale, but 2.6 gets me on scale with the people that I have placed in the model. And so that's giving me a, a pretty good understanding of what it would be like to walk around in this parklet. And this parklet doesn't really exist. Um, it's been moved, so it really only exists in its full potential within these digital models and within photographs. Okay, so there we have it. A super quick introduction to how we get things out of Rhino by saying file, export selected, and saving things as an FBX. And then on Unity, how we bring things in is asset, import new asset, and then we find that FBX and bring it in. And on Unreal, we're going to file and import into level, and that's bringing it in. So this is to let you know what's possible. I know many of you are working with Rhino models for your own work right now. So hopefully this will show you a path forward. And I'm sure there's gonna to be tons of more questions, so I'm gonna do a follow-up, one that'll be specific to Unity and one that will be specific to Unreal. Um, and I also wanted to highlight the difference here between this workflow and the workflow that we saw in class, which I should probably also record a video for, for the people who weren't in class, uh, which is using a plugin like Iris VR to immediately visualize this in a VR headset. Okay come back and see another video and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about colors and about materials and how they translate and what kind of problems we have in that sort of translation. All right, thanks for joining. Talk to you again soon.